Hello, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Raggy Rog, and if you're anything like me, then you're probably very familiar with Final Fantasy and all 15 and a half of its main stories. I am, of course, referring to each of its main series titles, numbered 1 through 15, and with a 16th installment due for release sometime in 2023. Maybe. Regardless, I'm actually not here to talk about that today. What I want to talk about is that one Black Sheep title in the series that snuck itself in as a main series release, Final Fantasy X-2. The first game in the Final Fantasy series to be treated like a true sequel. And you can consider this your spoiler warning. If you haven't played through Final Fantasy X or X-2, and you want to save the surprises for later, then please save this video to your watch later list and continue watching another time. For those less familiar, firstly, you may find this video difficult to follow, but I appreciate you watching all the same. Secondly, the Final Fantasy series rather infamously breaks the convention of making direct sequels and installments 1 through 15, while they may share various themes, elements, and other such tropes, all have completely unique stories and characters, independent from one another. And a lot of these installments take place in completely different time periods as well, with some rocking a typical medieval fantasy motif, others take a more science fiction approach, and then there's some that sort of mix the two together. This was just normal for Final Fantasy, and by the PlayStation era, it was just expected. So imagine our surprise when Squaresoft, whom at the time was actually merging with Enix Corporation to become Square Enix, released an installment titled Ten Two. To anyone who didn't know any better, it looked really strange. Like, imagine if instead of calling the third installment to the Matrix series, The Matrix Revolutions, they called it The Matrix Reloaded 2. Confusing would be an understatement. But there it was, Final Fantasy X-2, the sequel nobody actually asked for. Now I'm not saying it was a bad game, but I would say it was a bad Final Fantasy. This game that was treated like a main series release felt very much like a spin-off. Characters we knew and loved from the first game were either presented in a very watered-down fashion, or just completely different from how we had known them before. The game did a passable job of maintaining the general vibe of a Final Fantasy game, and recycled old assets pretty well. I don't think I heard anyone complain about the environments being exactly the same as they were in the original. It actually worked really well for the sequel. They did completely remake Kilika, which makes sense since it gets destroyed in the first game before you even get there, and I can only respect the developers for taking that into account. But the game's plot wasn't anything we expected, or were hoping for. The ending to the first game was a sad one, for sure. We saved the world, but at the cost of a wholesome, blossoming romance, among other relationships. It was really bittersweet, and I know that for me personally, it left me feeling a little hollow by the end of it. But was the cheesy Charlie's Angels style sequel really necessary? And did it really need to fill the slot of a main series release? Final Fantasy VII dipped its toes into sequels as well. In 2005, we saw the release of the feature film Advent Children, and then in 2006, we got Dirge of Cerberus for the PlayStation 2. But neither of these were considered main titles in the Final Fantasy series. I mean, one was just a movie, but the other is widely considered to be just a spin-off. Regardless, both of these additions to the series continue the main story, in one way or another. Final Fantasy XIII also got a direct sequel with XIII-2, and then later also got a spin-off titled Final Fantasy XIII Lightning Returns, but that one is widely referred to as XIII-3. But we can talk about those games in another video. My point is that the line between a sequel and a spin-off in Final Fantasy is apparently kind of blurry, and it makes me wonder if Final Fantasy X-2 even makes sense. Despite how anyone may have felt about the ending to the first game, doesn't change that it was a great story, and a sad ending isn't necessarily a bad thing. We don't always need the happily ever after. It feels very much like Square Enix wanted nothing more than to cash in on what had already been a very successful game release, and that's not always a bad thing. Nintendo made Ocarina of Time, realized they had a hit, and recycled assets to bring us Majora's Mask in only two short years, and both of these games are considered icons in gaming history. But in the case of Ten Two, I feel like a true spin-off might have been better received. It didn't need to follow tradition and use a turn-based combat system. Your protag wields a pair of firearms. Why not give us an action shooter like the previously mentioned Dirge of Cerberus? What about an action-style RPG in which the player needs to alternate between using Yuna, Riku, and Pain to make use of their unique strengths in ever-changing combat situations. 
Like, what if Yuna is better equipped for taking on flying enemies and creating distance, but switching to Pain is better for dealing a lot of damage quickly and tanking hits? But then Riku can be used for setting traps or dismantling Machina, among other things. Did the game have to be about Yuna? Did it have to be a sequel? There were a lot of characters introduced in Final Fantasy X, like a lot, and some of them are actually really interesting. One in particular who I knew we all want to see more of is Jekt. Here's my idea. What if instead of giving us a sequel that is at best described as contrived and with new characters who barely tie in with the previous story, we were given a prequel? What if we were given a story about Jekt? Thanks to the Jekt Sphere side quest in Final Fantasy X, in which you have to collect recordings of Jekt's adventure alongside Braska and Orin, we actually get treated to a pretty solid look into what he got up to. And thanks to the Dissidia series, we also got a good look at what Jekt is like in combat. But both of these things serve only to arouse our curiosity. Did Jekt fight like this when he was with Braska? How different did Spira look ten years ago? In the glimpses we get to see by watching the Jek Spheres, it looks like, for the most part, Spira is much the same as it ever was. For that reason, Square Enix could very feasibly build an entire new game featuring Jekt as the main character by recycling old assets. We could live the journey that Jekt experiences, and it would feel just as different as it did playing through 10 2. Keep in mind, Braska's pilgrimage begins in Bavel, so you know it's not just going to be an exact copy of Yuna's story. There's so much that could be done with this idea. In Final Fantasy X, when you find the first Jekt Sphere in Makalania Wood, Orin explains that Jekt recorded that one after he had decided he was going to stay in Spira, without really going into a lot more detail. At the time, we take it to mean that Jekt accepted the fact that he was never going to find a way back home. But what if by playing as Jekt, we find out his rationale is different? What if Jekt does nothing throughout the whole game but talk about wanting to find a way home? But then, just like Titus in the first game, finds out near the end the ugly truth that the summoner must die in order to defeat Sin. Wanting to hide this truth from Titus, Orin understates what Jekt really says, incidentally hiding the truth that Jekt never really gave up on wanting to go home. In this story, Jekt would learn about the sacrifice that Braska is willing to make, and would consider that Braska is knowingly leaving his daughter Yuna to grow up without him so that he can save the world from its greatest threat. He looks inside himself and makes the realization that he was in fact a poor excuse for a father, and decides the best thing he can do now is go all the way with Braska, even if it means never getting to go home. Braska is adored by Yuna, and is still willing to sacrifice himself for the greater good, so by Jack's logic, what right does he have to even talk about seeing his son again? It would be a journey of self-discovery in which Jekt learns to put others first and prioritize what really matters, like his family, albeit too late by the time he does. A story about Jekt and the changes he undergoes would give so much to the already existing plot revolving around Spira. 10-2 certainly gave us a glimpse into the older history of Spira, going into detail about the Summoner War and the deep-rooted treachery of the temples. But the first game in the series actually told two stories at the same time, in a similar fashion actually to how Final Fantasy VIII told us two stories, one about Squall and another about Laguna. I can guarantee that everyone who played through Final Fantasy X wanted to see more of Jekt, if only to quell their curiosity. Shortly after the release of Final Fantasy X, if you asked a hundred people if they'd prefer a sequel based on Charlie's Angels fighting the ghost of Spira's past, or a prequel showcasing Jekt as the main character, the next question would be, should the Blitz Bowl minigame be in the Jekt prequel as well? Final Fantasy X-2 is fine. I'm not saying the game shouldn't exist, but I feel like it was a weird choice of direction. Final Fantasy X would have been perfectly fine without an extended ending, and a prequel about Jekt would just be the coolest installment in Final Fantasy history. Imagine an action-style RPG, a full-on hack-and-slash that plays on the close and dirty fighting style we see Jekt use in Dissidia. Maybe the environments would be much the same as they are in the first game, but it would also be a new and exciting way to experience the fiends of Spira. No more turn-based combat, no more thinking, no more games. The playstyle would reflect Jekt as being fast-paced and wild, it would be exciting, and it would feel right, as well as draw a line between Jekt and Titus. You would get to see in what ways they are similar, and how they are different. 
When Tidus fights the Chocobo Eater, it's a slow and methodical battle of tactics, timing your attacks perfectly and knowing the right time to block an incoming assault. When Jekt fights the Chocobo Eater, all that goes out the window. It would be Jekt and his wits jumping around attacks in real time, finding ins and outs, making do with whatever he can. Where Tidus is intended to use a moveset that complements teamwork with moves like Cheer and Haste, we would get to see Jekt use a more offensively oriented fighting style that leaves him open and vulnerable, while also contributing to the team in no real way at all. Plot-wise, this could actually serve to occasionally put Braska in unnecessary danger and would play into Jekt's journey of growth and change, as we get to watch him become a better team player over time. What if the plot led with Jekt and Orn absolutely hating each other, and this rivalry also works against Braska's safety. How cool would it be to get to see not just Jekt, but our wise and experienced Orin succumb to jealousy and anger, and be forced to mature over the course of his journey, ultimately making the kinship and trust he builds with Jekt all the more meaningful? These are just a few ideas I've had off the top of my head while making this video. For me personally, I find the idea of revisiting Spira as Jekt and seeing the world through his eyes a lot more interesting than the contrived political war in Ten-2. It's not to say Ten-2 doesn't have a place. It was one of the many games in the Final Fantasy series I had a lot of fun playing when I was growing up. But my final thoughts are that its plot was highly unnecessary, and while the same could be said of a prequel with Jekt, I know which one I would have preferred. Characters like Jekt are interesting to me. We're given a character who is charismatic, outgoing, and mysterious, and then we're only lucky if we learn much more about them than all that. Jekt is enigmatic and eye-catching. There's something about him that makes you want to see more. For me personally, I don't think there was a single question that Tentu answered that I actually ever asked. But in the case of Jekt, I just want to know how he operates. How does he talk? What were his relationships like? I know that for me, a prequel featuring Jekt as the main character would be a dream come true. If you have thoughts of your own about Final Fantasy X-2, whether you thought it was a good game or not so much, let me know in the comments. What other stories from Spira would you like to see get told? Do you want to know more about the Summoner War? Maybe you'd prefer a prequel about Nuge, Barilai, and Gipol, and Pain working together in the Crimson Squad. Whatever it is, comment down below and I might make a video about that as well. In any case, this has been my retrospective look at Final Fantasy X-2, and my idea for an installment in this particular branch of the Final Fantasy series. If you enjoyed today's video, which I had a lot of fun making, then please give the video a like, and consider subscribing to the channel. Your every like, comment, and sub helps this small channel grow ever more into something I can be really proud of. It really does help. I enjoy making these videos for you guys so much, so your continued support means the world to me. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, have a good one.